What's up guys? It's a cool summer night here in Texas, great for reptiles, but tonight I'll be talking about an Arizona species, the speckled rattlesnake. Real quick, if you want to support the channel, I've got a couple different avenues. First of all, I've got shirts that say spectacular. They're Bella Canvas shirts because you deserve something soft and they're form-fitting so you can look and feel ripped. To get a spectacular shirt, hit the link down below. This is a limited run. I'm going to be doing a couple different shirt designs, but there's only a set number of these shirts. So if you want one, link's down below. Also something I haven't really pushed too much, uh, I do have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting me that way. I've had one of my best friends giving me $1 for over a year now, and that's been great. But if that's an avenue you want to explore, that'd be awesome. But without further ado, let's dive into the speckled rattlesnake. We're going to cover diet, habitat, and enclosure, and I'm going to throw in a little story about somebody who got bit by a speckled rattlesnake. If you're watching this video, you're either really interested in the speckled rattlesnake and want to learn more about them, or you might even be interested in keeping them. Either way, you need to know what happens and what it looks like when you get bit by one. Now, I'm not your parent. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't keep, but if you do decide to keep venomous snakes, you need to remember that you are an ambassador for this hobby. Don't be irresponsible. Another thing to note is that I'm not a herpetologist. This is what I've noticed that matches their natural habitat dynamic. So there might be somebody down below who says I'm doing everything wrong. Make sure you do a wide span of research, but venomous snakes aren't a lot, but venomous snakes aren't like ball pythons. Ball pythons, everyone knows 78, 88, humidity, this percentage, it, they've got it down to a T. There's so many care guides. Speckled rattlesnakes, it's a little bit different. They generally like it a lot hotter, and depending on the mountain range the snake came from, they can be found at a variety of altitudes. So what's important is that you match the natural habitat dynamic in order to be the most successful. Specks can also be notoriously picky as far as their diet goes. I was extremely lucky with mine to get it on frozen thawed mice so quickly. One of my main tips is to explore other options. I've seen specs that do not look at a mouse, a rat, or even an ASF, they won't look twice. But they'll chase down a Campbell's Dwarf hamster baby or a gerbil baby. Just something different about the smell. So if you're trying to get them established, those are very good avenues. Another tip I discovered is with my Yuma County spec that as I was getting him established, he wouldn't take the frozen thawed mice the first night. He would take it generally the second night and it's something about the beginning of the decaying process that just triggered him to start eating it. So he got established really quickly, but you might try and leave it in there an extra day and you'll find that your snake eats it. All right, so let's get right into the build. I'm starting with a layer of reptidship, of course. Now I know reptidship won't be in the Arizona desert, but if it does get wet, I don't have to worry about it molding like aspen. So it really works nice as a base for, like I've always said, all sorts of animals, no matter if they live in a more humid environment or not. Now reptidship does make reptid chunk, which takes out all the small pieces and leaves you with the largest ones, ensuring that you're not gonna have to full pull fibers or small pieces away from your venomous snake's mouth when when they go to eat or different things like that. It becomes a lot more of a hassle, especially depending on a different venomous snake. But for the spec, this is gonna be just fine. I've had them on it and I've had no trouble and I've just always loved Raptor Chip and it's always worked. Now I've gotten these from a friend. These are different granite rocks. And one of the coolest things about specs is wherever you find the speckled rattlesnakes, typically the granite rock is the same color. So because I'm working with a white spec, the white granite's gonna work best for me. I'm gonna put this piece on top because it's the prettiest, best looking, less dirty. And I'm gonna kinda stack it up, put it in a cool looking way. I'm gonna scoot it back. But this way, the speck can either tuck in the rocks there like they do out in the wild, or it can climb up to the top. Now specks typically like it pretty warm when they go to bask. So not only do I have a hot side and a cool side, I also added some elevation to my warm side to where the speck can go and bask to his preference. So whether it's under the rocks or on top of the rocks, it gives him some elevation and some more options even on this side. Again, the granite works really well because he just blends right into it and it, they always just look really cool when they're climbing on top of it. Now on the cooler side of things, I have a water dish that doubles as a hide. Since he's a Yuma County spec, he's going to be able to hide in there pretty easily. 
I'm just going to set it over on that side so he doesn't have to worry about the d choosing between security and warmth. He's going to be able to thermoregulate either way. Now one of the things I'm going to do that remind me of the Arizona vegetation is I'm going to add a choya root in there. It just adds a little bit of pizzazz to it. It's not really going to do much except he's going to be able to crawl over it. It helps him when, a little bit when he's shedding. I'm not actually going to put any sort of the rest of the jumping cactus in there because if you've ever been out herping in Arizona, you know Choya sucks. And the last thing I'm going to add is going to be this branch here. Reason for that is, is a lot of the creosote bushes, when they die, they'll have these twigs uh, that will sit on the ground there. And actually the first Yuma County speck I ever found, I was walking up the mountain like this and rocks trickled down behind me and I just heard it tss, tss, and I turn around and she was just crawling right where I had just walked. And then I followed her. She went into some twigs like this. I hooked her, bagged her. It was an awesome experience finding my first Yuma County spec. That was after three days of hiking because of the drought that year. And this is just kind of a personal memory for me to where if the snake crawls through, it just reminds me of that first Yuma County spec that I found. So it's 840 at night. I'm up here in the mountains and finally found a white speck. It's almost nine o'clock at night. I'm pouring sweat, but I got it. It's a female um, and I'm gonna show you where I found it. All right, so here I was on this hill. I was walking, a rock slipped and it rolled down. I'm walking upwards and I hear So I turn around and I see her. She's on the crawl this way. She goes into these branches and she crawls to right about there. So as you see right here, there's a bunch of rocks where she could get away and I would never see her again. So I carefully started using my hands. I pulled off some of these branches and I hooked her. I moved her up there and I bagged her. But this is the initial setup. At first glance, it's kind of bare bones, uh, but you do have a lot of different elements there between the hide, the water, hot side, cool side, elevation here, uh, and just vegetation. Honestly, that's what the desert's like. But now I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on this so you can see the two different options I have with this lid and why I do each one. All right, so I really like this lid here because I can work both actions with a hook and it has the two locks to ensure that the snake doesn't find a way to push this open or the snake doesn't uh, tend to press this forward. So I really like this lid. I can, if I need to get the snake out, I can open it all the way like this. Or if I just need to drop in some food, I can remove this here, open this up, drop in the food. Normally the snake, when I go to feed him, is either gonna be in this hide or on top of the rocks here. So I can do that with my extended pair of hemostats and I can stay completely hands-free. Now, if you've ever come across a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, you know if you kind of look at them funny, they'll probably start buzzing at you. They're quick to do it. Specs, they rely a lot more on their camouflage than Western Diamondbacks do. It's really amazing. And it's also really frustrating because as you're out there hiking, you're generally going across granite rock. And whatever color that rock is, is the color the specs gonna be. And you just know you're passing by dozens of them, especially with the size of some of these rocks, as big as minivans, as big as living rooms. So the first year I went out looking for specs, I had a lot of guidance and I had an awesome teacher. And we went to Yavapai County and we actually found three in a day, which was amazing for that year because there was a drought, there wasn't much rain, and you couldn't really follow the storms because there was just none there. Well, after we found what we were looking for in Yavapai County, we went to Yuma County. That's where things got very difficult. Across three days, we had only found a black tail and a western diamond bag. So it was extremely discouraging. It was hot. And I'm from Texas, so I was way too close to California for comfort. So we would get up in the morning, we would hike, and we would look until it got too hot. And as soon as the sun started going down and it started cooling down just a little bit, we were back out looking for them twice a day. On the third day, on the second hike at night, halfway through the night, I got frustrated and I decided to start looking up higher because maybe they hadn't come down yet because of the lack of rain. Well, sure enough, I'm walking up a slope and rocks trickle down behind me, you know, as, as you know if you've ever hiked down a mountain. And I heard, T -t -t, 
and I turn around and there was a female white speck crawling right where I just walked, right across my path. And I just, well, the arrangement me and my buddy had was if we found a female, he gets it. If we find a male, I get it. Well, now that we knew they were up higher, he wasn't about to let me find one and him not. Well, sure enough, he finds one, but he gets tagged. One fang on the finger, but he still manages to get the snake hooked and in the backpack and zipped up. He comes over to me, tells me he's been bit. Well, when you're in the mountains and you're higher up in altitude, things affect you quicker. So the muscle fatigue set in really quick for him. He laid down, he got nauseous, he felt like he was gonna have diarrhea, all the things that happen when you get bit. Well, specks are a little more neurotoxic than Western Diamondbacks, which he had been bit by before, but now this he had described as his worst bite. We had a third guy with us who went down the mountain trying to get cell phone coverage, but we were an hour from the closest town. We were in spitting distance of Mexico. If you've ever been out anywhere around that area in Arizona, you know you can see border patrol in the mountains. You can see the glint off of their windshields as you drive through. So you know border patrol is just watching the area at all times. You've also got the Air Force Base right there. In fact, when you go onto certain ranges, they tell you drink a lot of water and don't pick up the bombs. That right there, it's a bomb. That's been dropped a long time ago. Boy, I was looking for bombs. So whether it was me firing my gun off or the dude at the bottom, maybe he got cell phone reception. It's been a couple years since this happened. Eight border patrol cars show up down at the base. I can see all the lights from all the distance. So what we needed was to help get him down the mountain because it was very steep at certain parts. He was a bigger guy and there were only two of us. But by the time they got up the mountain, they had radio raid but by the time they got up the mountain, they had radioed in a marine helicopter and he goes, Hey, there's your ride. So we get him down the mountain. I've still got both speckled rattlesnakes in their bags in this backpack that I'm carrying. And we get down, all the border patrol is there. They ask for our wallets. And I tell them, hey, I fired my gun off and I've got it on my hip. Can I reach for my wallet? He looks at me and he goes, there's seven of us here. You're not gonna try anything? I was like, yeah, because no one would ever find me. It was ridiculous. But he gets taken off in the Marine helicopter me and the other guy, we drive the hour back to the closest town. We pick him up, we meet him at the hotel, and the next day I drive 14 hours back to Texas and we get him back. And I've got the snake still, and because he bit somebody, I named him Bruce. It's and apparently Bruce is a bastard. You, my <laughs> now speckled rattlesnake bites are serious, and you should definitely seek medical attention. But you can rest assured to know that no one has ever died from a speckled rattlesnake bite in the United States. Do remember that a lot of that is due to exposure. Speckled rattlesnakes aren't likely to come in contact with humans because they're in very select areas. While western diamondbacks, copperheads, and cottonmouths, their range is a lot wider. So therefore they see people a lot more often. So no matter the venomous snake, do your utmost due diligence to take every precaution necessary. Again, I'm not your parent. But if you haven't had experience with venomous snakes, you shouldn't be owning venomous snakes. And remember, you're an ambassador for the hobby, for the species, and everything else. If you do something bad, it puts a bad image on the animal. Speckled rattlesnakes are amazing. They're so much fun, and they're great ambassadors. Even if somebody's afraid of snakes or venomous snakes, they'll still look at the speck and go, Wow, that's beautiful. It's spectacular. <laughs> but guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. You are just talk and interact. I love hearing from you guys. If you want a t-shirt, link down below. It is a limited run. But I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you all next time.